Uh, my name's Tim Gentle, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. It goes for about 50 minutes, it's quite in depth. We really do roll up our sleeves, and today we're trying to get our head around e-commerce and selling online. It's a big topic, sometimes can be seen as a little bit dry, a little bit technical, so you've got to work with me here a bit. But at the end of the day, uh, this whole session is designed to give you the confidence to be able to use your business catalyst software to be able to sell online. Now we will cover sort of the general side of selling online, the benefits and, and some of the tips and tricks. Uh, but when we lift the hood and show you how to change the spark plugs, we'll be using business catalyst, which is a, a software program for you to do so. So there's quite a few in the room today, which is great. Uh, some of you have got business catalyst websites. Some of you are thinking of potentially coming to the you know, over to the BC side of things. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the general rule of thumb is Business Catalyst is beautiful, but what you'll learn today here can be applied right across the board. All right, so for those that are joining us for the first time, um, we have Erin Jennings in the house. Erin Jennings is one of our account managers. She's very switched on, loves to do marketing, and uh, she'll be uh, certainly assisting me today in the chat room. So you're able to ask her some questions. You can do that by typing it in the room and she'll respond to you or you can raise your hand and Erin will be able to sort of interrupt me in one respect and sort of say, hey Tim, we've got a great question or someone might want to add a comment. Now we can actually bring you into the room and we can hear you. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, we do encourage it and we, uh, we, we ask you to you know raise your hand or let Erin know that you're happy to present or happy to jump in the room and be heard by the other people. Um, there is a questions tab as well, so you can go down there and ask those questions to Erin. We do have a Q and A at the end. I hit stop and uh, we finish the recording and we do spend five, 10 minutes just sort of answering a few questions as well. So feel free to save up a few questions for the end if I don't cover it in uh, detail during the session. All right, so what are we going to be learning today? Well, the first thing is we're going to have a quick chat about Business Catalyst, and then from there we're going to be jumping into what is e-commerce. We'll talk about the benefits of e-commerce and then what you can sell online. There's a whole heap of things. We're going to be talking about this thing known as a payment gateway, and then after that I'm going to be jumping into the back of BC and giving you a shopping cart tour. I'm not going to dive in as deep as I do during training sessions, uh, this is more of an overview, but by all means, we're certainly going to show you what it's got. We'll talk about stock management and shipping, but gee, that's a complicated topic and requires a lot more attention than what I'll give it today. But at the end of the day, I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Gift vouchers is also going to be mentioned. And then once you've got a website, how do you actually convert, um, I guess, leads? So someone lands on your website, how do you convert them into a sale for them to add to the cart or to to register their um, donation. From there, we'll finish off today with tips, tricks, and if you need some more support here at DE, the process to follow. So without further ado, it's time to get stuck into our learning today. All right, so the benefits of Business Catalyst. It's an all-in-one solution, okay? So it sits up online, it gives you control, and it allows you to grow your business and it can grow with you. So in one respect, Business Catalyst is an all-in-one marketing, e-commerce, uh, website solution. It's very easy to use. One of the advantages of BC is when you're logging in and using it, once you're trained up, you, know, you might need one or two training sessions. After that, you can be quite self-sufficient. It's regularly updated by Adobe. So Adobe are, I guess, one of the world's leading software, I guess, companies in the world in terms of the multimedia, sort of graphic design, website space. And so they acquired Business Catalyst, or oh gee, it'd be about maybe five years ago now, and we've been on the ride um, before that, and really have enjoyed working with Adobe and enhancing the product. Now it's hosted in Sydney and also over in Asia, uh, sorry, over in the US and UK. So there's three data centers around the world, which does help and they're all secure, they're all nicely set up, and that's where your website sits. So Design Experts works with Business Catalyst. We use that as the framework for some of our websites that we design here. 
And then we almost put your design on top of the software and then we train you how to work it. So there's kind of you, the client, there's design experts, the architect and almost the painters in one respect. And then after that, we've got the, the actual software, the, the machine in the background and that's Business Catalyst. So it's now time to talk about e-commerce and this, uh, I guess, uh, Business Catalyst Masterclass series has really drilled down all the different things that you can do in Business Catalyst. And we're down to the, the crunch now. We're really starting to ramp it up. We're here day, today to talk about e-commerce. Now, I couldn't really dress this up anymore. What is e-commerce? Well, to me, it's accepting credit card payments online. So there's nothing after that, everybody. That's what I believe e-commerce is. So it's not like a BSB transfer where you give someone your bank account details. I, I really don't see that as being e-commerce anyway. I won't, I won't be talking about that, for instance. You know, it's not really BPay. Although both of those are electronic forms of commerce, today I'm really going to be talking about accepting credit card payments online. If you want to put in brackets on your BC website or in brackets on your website, that may give you a little bit more context of where I'm heading today. All right, so what are the benefits of e-commerce? Well, people are now confident to buy online. You know, I always look at my mum, you know, and uh, you know she hasn't joined me today, so that's good. Uh, but mum, you know, she, she's happy to buy online now. So if mum's happy, a lot of other people are too. So there's this huge confidence in people to say, yep, I'm gonna put my credit card details through this and I'm gonna buy a ticket to an event or make a donation or, or purchase a product. Now the good thing about it is it doesn't give potential customers an excuse to leave. Oh yeah, I'll ring them in the morning or I'll give them a call or I'll go and visit them in their store or oh, yeah, I can't be bothered sort of ordering a brochure. Yeah, so it's kind of good. It gets them at the moment. It does improve customer service. You know, you know, people can access you at all hours of the day and night. Uh, they can access you on the weekends. Um, you know, they can buy things and have them delivered. And they don't need to actually talk to you. You know, it depends on how you want to work with your customers and what you're doing, of course. But at the end of the day, selling online can certainly help improve your customer service. Now it'll also build your brand, 100%. You know, selling online shows that you're professional. It shows that you're innovative in one respect. It shows that you're very progressive. You know, it says that, hey, I know what, what's going on here. You know, I understand the web's moving and the world's moving and, you know, I'm offering X, Y, and Z online and I'm experimenting and so forth. So it does build your brand and it shows that you're sort of leading the charge. It does help improve cash flow, so having the ability of someone buying online, you know, you can get the money in your account the next day or that afternoon or, you know, wh however long it takes to, to process. But rest assured, you know, you don't have to put a check in the mail or you don't have to go down to the bank and deposit the money or, you know, whatever happens, it, it does help to improve cash flow. Now, the obvious, but I thought I should state it, is it'll help you grow sales. You know, you'll open your audience right up to international, interstate, out of town, however you want to look at it. But suddenly we're going from, you know, selling in your geographical location of the people you meet or when you go to an event and sell your books or, you know, accepting, you know, uh, event entries uh, via some other form. So suddenly we're growing our sales and, and opening up our audience. The last one, I apologize for that. Um, that's... Oh. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to be moving on. A little bit of an error there, but it's all good. So now I'm going to be moving on. So what can I sell online? Well, why don't I drop to the bottom? It's there waiting for me. I can't help but uh, see it. Um, donations. So one of the things that you can sell online is donations. You can accept credit card payments for people that are happy to donate on your site. Let's jump back at the top again. and You can definitely sell products. Okay, so you can sell a wheelbarrow, a bucket, you can sell a calculator, you can sell products online. You can also sell services. So people can book your time, uh, people can, you know, uh, book a space or a meeting with you, you know, appointments, you can sell services online. 
You can also sell gift vouchers, so people can buy gift vouchers online and uh, they can redeem them in your store, um, they can redeem them on your website, so gift vouchers are a great thing to sell online. Or what about membership and subscriptions? You know, selling membership and subscriptions is a great way to earn some extra income. Maybe you might have a, a membership that allows them to access a secure part of your website. So it's like a VIP section that you give away, you know, videos or, or downloadable documents or whatever it is behind that closed door, you can sell that. Or if you want to, you can sell gym memberships online. I don't mind, but it's just another thing that you can sell online. You can sell e-products as well. So e-products are pretty exciting. They're the things that kind of don't exist. They're like a digital product, a movie file, a music file, a PDF download. So you can sell e-products. And you can also have the ability for people to pay their bill online. And what I mean by that is that they receive their invoices and then it's say by email and it says, hey, you can pay your bill online and they can go on and pay for their invoice via your website. And I'm not referring to BPay or BSB there. I'm actually talking about clicking on a link, going somewhere on your website, entering in their credit card details and their invoice number, and bingo, they're paid for their invoice. So Erin, I'm going to take a quick pause. Um, let, me, let me know if we've got any questions coming in or if you want to run a quick poll. But after that, I'm going to show you some examples of selling online. I'll just give it a couple more seconds for the last few people to vote. Okay, I'll close that one off there now and share the results. So, 100% of you have made online purchases recently, which is fantastic. So that means that you understand the importance of being able to sell online and how that can really um, influence and benefit your business. 100% of people have purchased online. Wow, that's impressive. I think I've been running this workshop for nearly seven years now and the uh, first time I've had a hundred. All right, exciting times. All right, so let's jump into some examples. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be putting these up on the screen. So I'm just going to go through them. We're gonna have a look at some event bookings. Apologies for that down the bottom there again. Then I'm going to be having a look at a product shopping cart. I'm going to be looking at a service shopping cart. We're going to take a look at a service form. These are all things that are accepting credit cards online. After that, we'll have a look at some gift vouchers. And then we'll talk about PayPal. And then we'll talk about um, pay your bills online. So we've got some exciting stuff to sort of show you some examples. Um, but you know, we just have to pull back a little bit more before I get to the fancy stuff because you do have to learn, I believe, how these websites actually work behind the scenes to make a more informed decision about what suits you. So bear with me, this particular next part is quite detailed and uh, it's going to take you through the options that you have to sell online. So I need you to understand one thing. The first thing is, what you can sell online. So products, services, gift vouchers, memberships, e-products, pay your bill online, and so forth, right? Once you know that, then you have to decide, well, how are you going to accept payments? So here we go, I'm gonna introduce it to you. It's known as a payment gateway, all right? A payment gateway. Now watch closely as I've got my mouse here on the screen, okay? I've got the mouse on the screen. What I might do is I, I might even get my fancy machine going here. It's all here ready to be used. So let's bring it into the room. I welcome screen annotate. Lovely. All right, so here we have screen annotate. I'll just draw here. So this is you, okay? This is you and you are a website owner. Here's your website sitting here. So your website sits on a server, let's say the Sydney server, and that's where the software that runs your website sits. So the software program, in this case let's call it a shopping cart, sits on a server and you have the ability to access it. Your website designer 
also has the ability to access it. So you've got this software program loaded on a server that has a shopping cart that you control and you administrate that. But what happens is that your customer comes onto your website and they see your website from a public perspective. Now that customer jumps on your website and says, yes, I want to buy your wheelbarrow. They add the wheelbarrow to their shopping cart and then they receive, um, they put in their, uh, their, their uh, credit card details and when they click process or let's say, you know, order, a message is sent from the software business catalyst to what's known as a payment gateway. So the information relating to the credit card, let's say the name on the card, the credit card number, the expiry date and the CSV is sent to the payment gateway and the payment gateway literally just says yes or no. And what I mean by that is it says, you know, is this a valid credit card number? You know, is there, is there uh, enough money on the account? And if so, it sends back a message to the software and says, yep, bingo, you can process that credit card. What happens then is that an email is sent to the customer saying, hey, thank you for your purchase and an invoice. You receive an email to say, hey, you've had a purchase, you've had an order, you better start to get ready to ship it out. So the payment gateway is really important because you can certainly have a website without a shopping cart, but as soon as you go to the next level, as soon as you say, I want to accept credit cards online, you need to have a payment gateway to authorize the credit card. Now, if it's all successful, you have a thing called an online merchant facility. Okay, This is set up with your bank. So in one respect, these two things here, this is all under the one roof. Say you're with the Commonwealth Bank, Bendigo Bank, NAB, doesn't matter. You would need to firstly set up a bank account and then you would need to ask them, hey Mr. Bank Manager, I need an online merchant facility please. I need an online merchant facility. Those that are accepting credit card payments off their website, let's say you own a shop, you probably have what's known as a merchant facility, all right? So you will still need to upgrade it. You'll still need to upgrade it to an online merchant facility. So you'll still need to go to your bank and say, hey, Mr. Bank Manager, I need an online merchant facility. So if you want to accept payments online, this is one of the ways you can do it. Now it's interesting because you need to start with your bank, then you need to set up an online merchant account and then you need to go and get a payment gateway. So at the same time that you're building your website, you'd want to be starting doing these things over here because these can take quite a long time, but the bank to approve the online merchant facility will want to look at the website to approve it. So there's all these cross pollinations between the various parties, but this is the setup that you'll need to do. And look, they do come with costs. You've got to pay for the payment gateway. You've got to pay for the online merchant facility and you probably have a bank account fee too. So please understand that what I'm trying to do here is just give you a few tips. I'm not going to go into the full detail about how to do this, but that's what's involved. I, I want to show you another setup though. So the next setup is known as, I want to get this right for you. The next setup is using what's known as PayPal. Okay, PayPal. So PayPal is known as an all-in-one solution. So nothing changes here really. So we've covered that already. The customer comes on, buys a product, but have a look here. The message is sent to the payment gateway, which authorizes the credit card. But you don't need to go to your bank because PayPal are an online merchant facility and you can have a PayPal account. So all of these things here operate under the roof of PayPal. 
at the end of the month, at the end of the week, at the end of the day, you still need to transfer your money to your bank account, Commonwealth, Bendigo Bank, and so forth. But you can use PayPal to authorize credit cards and to take the money off the credit card and deposit it into a holding account known as a PayPal account. So this is another way to accept payments online. So the first way was one way and, and, and this is another way. And look, there's lots of different ways. I, I'm gonna go into one more just to sort of take you through it. So the next one is known as a, come on, where is it? Damn it, I haven't put it up. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to access it quickly enough. Um, yes, so the last way, the last way, I will see if I can get this. This won't take me long, bear with me. It's important to see. No. Bang, bang, bang. Oh, dear me, dear me. Just gonna bring it up, one second. Hello Google, welcome, help me out today. Recent, and I know you're in there. No, not gonna bother. All right, either way, the last one, very simply, okay, the last one is known as an offline merchant facility. So what happens here, let's just use this as an example, okay? The offline merchant facility. Your software program, Business Catalyst, okay, can accept the online order. Let's not worry about all this just yet, okay? Just ignore this for the moment. What happens is that you can receive an order, but you can process it by your FPOS machine. Okay, so some of you may have FPOS machines sitting in your store. And what you can do is you can take the order and then you can process it via your, I guess, existing merchant facility. So that's not a bad way to do it. And then from there, as you know, when you process the credit card, the money goes into your bank account. So you kind of don't need this payment gateway in this online merchant facility. This particular technique is known as an offline. Okay, so an offline. It's a good way to sort of start accepting payments online. In one respect, you know, the customer doesn't know any difference. They still receive a thank you. Okay, they still receive a thank you. Um, you still receive the order, but you're jumping in between. You're kind of the, the, the person that has to process this manually, just like taking a phone order. So it's known as an offline purchase. So there's kind of three, there's three there to be uh, decided upon. So now that you know there's a real-time payment gateway, an all-in-one payment gateway, and this half-baked, I apologize for that, offline payment gateway, I'm going to give you some examples now of this in play. All right, so this is how some of these websites are working. This has a business catalyst shopping cart sitting behind it. It's a beautiful looking website and kind of trendy and it's a store in Molden in Victoria. You can come along here, you can click on the books and then you can go in and you can purchase a book via the shopping cart. And so you can read about the book, you can understand, you can have a look at some cross-selling products and you can add that to your cart. So this particular website is using a shopping cart. In the background, it's actually using eWay. So when someone comes on and actually, let's go into say my bag. From here, I can choose a shipping method. Let's just say in Victoria. And I can pay now. So when I click pay now, Business Catalyst will work with eWay to authorize the credit card, just to make sure everything's A-OK. -okay. And if it is, it'll go, thank you for your purchase. It'll send an email to the person to say, thank you, here's your invoice. 
and the I guess the website administrator will receive an order and will fulfill the order. Now, this is an oldie but a goodie. Okay, I don't know how old. Let me have a look here. I think 2011-ish, it feels like. Yeah, 2011. The old Bendigo Pottery. Lovely place to visit. And with Bendigo Pottery, you can, you know, cl click on kitchenware, and then you can go into this environment. This is quite a, a popular one where you hold over and it quickly gives you a price to get a feel before you go in. But again, this is exactly the same. I'm not going to run through it, but this is using a shopping cart with a real-time payment gateway behind it. So in one respect, the visitor doesn't leave the website. It's almost known, and actually some people refer a real-time payment gateway, they refer to it as a seamless gateway. This is another example. Uh, this time it's selling a service. It's a little different. I thought I'd just throw it in. So you can have a look at the services that Inspection HQ offer. I guess pool and safety. Probably chose the wrong one. I'll choose another one. I'll just go uh, pre-purchase inspections. What's here? Okay, I can come in here and I can book now. So I click book now. And then from here I can have a little look at the type of house that I own and I can get someone to come in and do an inspection for me. So this is almost, it's using a shopping cart, uh, but it's selling a service, which is kind of cool. So something to consider when you're working with services, maybe you could sort of twist and make a shopping cart work for your service. Now here's another one. This is placing a order using a shopping cart, but it's also placing an order for catering. So yes, I'll have, um, two berries, I'll have two sa 21 salmons, I'll order um, five, four wraps large. And what I'm doing here is I'm just working my way through. And all of these are working on the back of Business Catalyst. So I can come in here, I haven't added to my cart, I don't think, I've got to click Add to Cart as I'm working my way through. So I'll just select a few random ones, I'll get go back up to the 21. And then I'll scroll down to the bottom and I can view cart. I reckon it should say view order. Anyway, just a little tweak. View cart. And so from here I can see all the different things that I'm about to order. I can choose, or it's free delivery, which is kind of cool. I can pay later or I can pay now. So again, this is accepting credit cards for catering. Now this particular example, N8 Health, a great group of people that you know, sort of deal in everything from you know uh, yoga right through to podiatry to you know chiropractic they actually sell gift vouchers so they added this onto their website after it was built so this is an add-on and from here you can choose well do you want an e-certificate do you want to receive it via email or do you want it sent in the mail with a nice little bow on it so again I can choose a gift certificate and I can choose a particular style, a particular price, and then I can go through the process of ordering it. When you do gift vouchers, it's great to get to this stage where you can put your name and your dad's name or your mum's name and, and going through the motion of you know being able to put their name on the on the e-card or put their name on the uh, gift pack or, the, or the, um, the, the gift voucher that gets delivered via mail. Love that one. Here's another one, this is Father's Day. It's a beautifully designed site. Um, you know, this one is getting a checkup for your dad for Father's Day. This is known as formydad.org.au. And this is a custom built website on, on the Business Catalyst platform, of course. But here you can go through the process of buying it for Father's Day. So you buy it, um, you go to the checkout, and then you write down what you want to say on the card and it's just a lovely thing. You know, you can even print it if you want and uh, and give it to him, uh, hand it to him as you, as you see him. But this will send an email. From there, they're sent a, I think it's a product code or something similar to that, where they come onto this website and they book an online checkup. So you firstly buy it and then you book it with a specialist who meets you online actually and uh, uses something like Skype to have a bit of a, a check and then talk to you and then if you need to be referred to a doctor, potentially that's the next step. This particular example, it's Mindfulness Training Institute. 
it's a great organization and they actually do a lot of um, workshops and retreats. Uh, this is just a, a very sort of long form um, they, they need to fill out. They're, they're quite selective in terms of who comes along and they like to ask a lot of questions. So that's, in, that's kind of their style. And here we've got some questions that they ask. And then at the bottom you actually pay for the, uh, the $65 registration fee. And they'll use a lot of those details. When the person arrives, they're already filled out and ready to rock and roll. Okay, this is uh, stepping a little bit outside Business Catalyst. And what I mean by that is it's still setting on BC. Okay, so when I go to admin, when I go to admin, you'll see that it's still sitting on the back of Business Catalyst. Alrighty, there it is. That's the login area. But with King Valley Walnuts, it's a very basic site. It's probably on our lowest, lowest plan. It doesn't need to be on anything special. It doesn't have all of the, I guess, the power of the e-commerce module. So what we do here in these instances is, you can see here, I'll go say a pickled walnut. I might buy, say, three jars. And when I click buy now, watch what happens. I've just clicked that button, and this activates the PayPal experience. So it's very important to see the difference. What I've done here is I've sort of used Business Catalyst as the starting point to edit my website, but now I'm integrating PayPal buy buttons. And this doesn't use a shopping cart in Business Catalyst. It doesn't really even have a shopping cart. It's just a technique in accepting payments online. It's known as a PayPal buy button or um, product button, or I'm sorry, I don't know the exact word. This is a similar example, okay? She's an oldie but a goodie, okay? I, I think this is 2009, there we go. And so this one here, again, I just wanna buy a clear heart. I click on clear heart, it boots up the PayPal processing, and from here I can go in and, and buy that through my, uh, I guess, uh, through PayPal. So I don't actually, this is not a seamless gateway. Alrighty. Here's another one. This is events. You know, you can come in here and you can click on events and then you can register for events. Okay, so again, this is using credit cards to process people's enrollment. Okay, I'll just go back. I'll see if I can find an event that's got a form. Here you go, this will be great. And so I can register and pay for my event online. So that's pretty cool, that one. Again, similar to the Mindfulness Training Institute. And the last example I wanted to show is accepting payments online for invoices. So this one here, if you go to the Design Experts website, let's just start from the start, and you click on the bottom pay your bill online, this is a opportunity for our clients, and some of you probably already use this, you can come in here and put your invoice number in and put your credit card number in and bang and bang and bang and wonderful, thank you very much. This gives you the ability to pay your invoice online. So there's uh, quite a few examples, you know, everything from an integrated sort of shopping cart experience to using the PayPal buy button to integrating some sort of web form that accepts payments. So in terms of which one's suitable for you, you can make that your own decision, whether you want to go with a real-time payment gateway or use PayPal to get started, you can just talk to your account manager and they can walk through that with you and help you make a more informed decision. All right, we're going to uh, lift up the hood and change the spark plugs now, guys. We're going to be jumping behind BC, so let's get started. All right, so I always use tibgentle.com. So just from the get-go, please understand I don't actually sell any products online. I'm just using the software today to demonstrate. So what I've done here is I've created a fake product. Here it is. So this is a orange funky chair. So those that are interested in checking it out, uh, here's the link. Um, it's just timgentle.com slash e-commerce slash orange items. Alrighty. Now, at the end of the day, this is a webinar. It's just designed to give you a broad stroke approach. I just got this whipped up for the purpose of the education. So feel free to visit it, um, but if not, let's get behind the scenes and work out how all this works. So I'm going to be logging into the, my website 
and I'm going to click on the dashboard to bring us back to where we need to be. All right, so here I am, I'm back at the dashboard and I am going into e-commerce. Let me just zoom in so you can see. So I'm about to talk e-commerce, I'm not gonna deviate. Here we go, I'm clicking on e-commerce. And what you'll see here is you've got products, catalogs and so forth. So I'm gonna quickly go over each of these and give you a bit of an overview of each of them. All right, so first of all, products. Products can be imported into your system via an Excel spreadsheet. Not enough time to show you how to do that. Very detailed, very powerful, but just understand that Excel can be used to manage your products. So what you can see here is if I had 100, 300 products, I could find them all based on their name. I can even search on a product using a product code or a, or a title. But I've got one product for the purpose of the lesson and I'm going to be talking about the orange funky chair. So let's go in and work with it. All right, so I'm in the back of the orange funky chair now, and you can see here that I've kind of got this sort of step-by-step -step process along here. I'm gonna walk through all of these. I'm gonna keep the pace fairly quickly. You can always watch the webinar over and over again and pause and play, pause and play. All right, so each of them have a product name, okay? You give it a product name and a URL. So this is a direct link to the actual product and you can edit that if you wanna make it more friendly for SEO or for promotional reasons. You can give it a product code, you don't have to, but it helps when you've got multiple products and you're accepting lots of orders, especially for different sizes and different colors. Now you can add an image all right, sometimes people add a small and then they add a large. So what I mean by that is that powers the thumbnail and then it also powers the larger image when you go in to view the product in greater detail. Okay, it can be unenabled or enabled. So this means that, look, I don't want the public to see it, but I wanna keep it. Hey, I'm ready for the public to see it. So this is kind of good to have it sitting idle in the background should you be out of stock. Okay, you can have it on sale or not on sale. This will cross off the price and say, hey, it's now $79, not 99. Now, if it is a gift voucher, you can actually nominate that this is a gift voucher. Or if it's a downloadable product, like an e-product, this is where you can select e-product and you can limit it to three downloads, so to speak. Okay. Now you can add SEO metadata, pretty powerful when you do that. So if I had a sort of a retro chair, okay, I could come in here, retro chair orange. You can start adding a description about the product to help it get ranked, help it get ranked in Google. Very powerful. So if you're gonna be spending some time, you know, setting up a website and having a shopping cart, getting some really nice, say one or two sentences in this particular spot here, that's got some really good rich keywords in it, will help you to get ranked. Don't forget though, that if your website or your product does get displayed in Google, it will display the meta description. So in the search engine results, those two lines that appear under your website is actually pulling it from here. Alrighty. Now you can have product dimensions, very good if you're going to be sending it out or using some sort of, I guess, shipping. So you need to weigh it in grams and you need to give it a width, a height and a depth. So I've had customers sit there and weigh all their products and measure them all. You need to do that if you wanna work with the shipping and the, uh, and the Australia Post sort of calculations in terms of postage. Now in more, in more options, there's a lot of stuff, okay? I'm probably not gonna cover that today, but just understand there's a lot in here in terms of going in a little bit deeper. Now, your product description, this is what people read. And so you can put in your features and your benefits, a little bit of a quick little blurb. Some people even you know, put in a little video in here if, um, if we haven't actually embedded it in the template. So you can do a lot of work in here, and this is what people will read when they're looking at your product. So once you've sort of nailed all that, you click save and then you literally you go to the next step. All right, we wanna give this chair a price. I think that's a little bit cheap. So what we're gonna be doing here is the recommended price 
is three ninety nine, and I'm going to be selling it if I had ticked that tick box for three, you know, three twenty nine. All right. So if you were using that sort of pricing strategy, this is where you would do it. Now this is known as a consumer price, and you can enable volume discount. So if I sell five of these chairs, well, I'll tell you what, you can have it for 319. And if I sell 15, well, I'll tell you what, you can have it for 297. And so you can have two thresholds when it comes to pricing discounts to do with volume. Now, if you're dealing with GST, in this environment, I think some products require you to put the GST and separate it and some don't. I think it's got to do with uh, food and, and, and products, uh, so a chair and a piece of um, something you can eat. Uh, it is a little bit different, and I'm sorry I don't have the exact answers today, and Aaron, please feel free to jump in. But in some of our instances, you have to add the non-GST price in here, at which point in time you would apply the GST in this area. So it does handle GST. I think for the today, probably don't get too bogged down in that but it does have that engine to power the GST. So when the person buys it, it's displayed in the invoice. All right, it's also got a wholesale. Okay, so you can have a login area where a wholesaler can log in. And why not? You can give them a discount. All right, so a wholesaler can access prices that people don't see publicly. You can have two price points where they, if they buy five, they get it for a cheaper price, etc. Alrighty, but don't worry, you don't have to call it wholesaler. Maybe you could call it VIP, you know. The name is called wholesaler, but you could offer your VIPs access to log in and get a better price. Alright, catalogs. So catalogs are the way to, uh, I guess, have a filing cabinet for your products. So you would have, you know, if you were selling uh, clothes, you would have male, female, pants, T -sh uh, shirts, ties, and so forth over here. And then you would move them from the left over to the right. So in this instance, I don't have any uh, catalogs. So you must understand I just created one called Orange Items. And that's where I placed the orange funky chair. So you can have one product in multiple catalogs. Okay, attributes are things like colors, size, shape, and you just add these, all right? So this one happens to be the footstool, and you can sort of have that in round or have that in square, but that could certainly say color or size. Let's say color, it would be red, yellow, and blue. And so you can come in here and you can even edit this and you can change the price for some different ones, so large, small, medium, um, and if you had different prices for different colors, in this instance, you can do that. You can even have a image for each color. So when the person selects their color they're interested in, it can switch the color that's displayed. So some clever programming there and quite easy to use. Now it's got inventory management. All right, so you can allow business catalysts to manage your in inventory. So that's your stock management. All you have to do is to turn it on. Okay, so I'll enable it now. And then from here, you've got three choices. You can show the product, but don't accept orders. You can hide it or enable pre-ordering. So you just have to let the system know that you've got 25 in stock. Hey, give me an email when there's only five left. And actually, to be honest, I've got 10 on their way. So what I'm doing is I'm letting Business Catalyst know. And what happens is that if I sell out, I'm going to enable pre-ordering. So pretty exciting when you understand how powerful this can be. You know, if you're running stock management on your point of sale or through another through another means, you know, synchronizing this, it does make it more complicated. It can be done, but it's quite hard. Some people just actually just have a stock um, uh, management for their website and they have an allocation in their master system. It's got inventory management, it's there to be used and there's no problem with that. Now moving along to poplet images. So poplet images are extra photos you can have for your product, up to 10 of them. Here's a top, a back, a side, here's the, uh, the security barcode. Whatever you wanna do in here, you can have different photos. 
And the last thing you can do is cross sell and upsell. So if I had 15 products here, uh, it was a bit like, uh, let's go back to here, we'll go back. You notice that there was a book in here. Let's go back one more. And so down here, this is kind of a, a cross selling product. Alrighty. So what's happened is that they've moved the cross selling product to here and you can have multiple products. A torch might need batteries. A table might need chairs. So you work your way through from left to right and you take your time and you can do it in Excel as well. But that is a huge sort of, you know, pretty whirlwind tour, but you can see how easy it is to use and what's under the hood. Now when it comes to catalogues, you need to set these up. It's a filing cabinet. Okay, so at the moment I have a master one called e-commerce and I have another one called orange items. So I can easily create another one. All right, so I might go funky chairs or just go chairs. All right, and so the root level is going to sit under e-commerce. So I've created a new catalog called uh, chairs and put it under e-commerce. There's a little bit more to it. Not really though. I'm just going to click save. And so now if we go back to our catalogs, we can see here that we've got e-commerce and we've got two sub categories called chairs and orange items. In fact, I can go into chairs if I want to and I can see all the products that have been assigned to it. Nothing has been assigned because I just created it, but why not? I can move that over now and assign the orange funky chair to my chair categories. So when you go onto a website, let's go back and we'll continue to use this one for today, that's fine. Um, if I go to household, these are catalogs. These are catalogs. So when I click on baking, that's displaying products that have been assigned to that catalog. All right, discount codes, pretty cool stuff. You can set these up, so free shipping. Uh, 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 enter this code at the checkout and get $10 off. So this is where you come in here and you create them. So if you wanted to, you could say that this is a Father's Day, you know, Father's Day special. I don't know why I've got this thing on Father's Day at the moment. Father's Day special. And the discount code is FDS2015. Alrighty. And so when they enter this code in the checkout, I'm going to give them a 10% discount. Alrighty. So that's how you do it. You can say that um, it has to be greater than $250. And... Um, I'm only going to allow 25 of these. I can also apply it to only selected catalogs. So if you were selling Father's Day products and you had a catalog called Father's Day or Father Items or For Dad, that's where you would select For Dad. You can have a release date and an expiry date and you can have it enabled and ready to go. You can have all these set up um, and use them when you need it. I wasn't sure if I should do that. There we go. All right, you can definitely set up gift vouchers. Okay, so um, you can add a gift voucher. It gives a number, I think, and I haven't spent too much in time in here. Looking mindful of the time, please understand that Business Catalyst allows you to sell gift vouchers that people can redeem on your website. So they get a little code, they come on and they can spend the money. So you might buy it for your mum and she can come onto the website and redeem it. You can have affiliates sell your products on their sites. That's exciting. And we talked about payment gateways, didn't we? We talked about payment gateways. We talked about PayPal and eWay. So just to let you know, really the, the crux of it all is that you can select a gateway. There's lots of them in here. I think I talked about a few today. So I talked about um, eWay, which will be here. I talked about um, SecurePay, or haven't, but that's another good one to use. Um, if you're with the National Bank, theirs actually integrates directly in. If you say, if you're with the Bendigo Bank, you would use MIGS. So, you know, it's a matter of just talking to your account manager and working out which gateway is best for you. Or you can, inter you can use PayPal. Alrighty, so you can just set up a PayPal account. Uh, normally we ask you to provide the login details. We go in and get the token and settle this up 
and we just put that little bit of information in there and and then from there it can use PayPal to process payments. Just to let you know, um, it's not seamless. So they do leave the site, go to PayPal, put in their details, then come back to the site. We do have a workaround for that. We've experimented with that a few times, so that's kind of cool. And I don't believe you can accept events using this PayPal. Um, PayPal have a more advanced, this is the free one, just to let you know. When I say free, there's no setup fees, there's no ongoing fees, only when you process an order. Um, but there comes a time that occasionally we need to upgrade people and um, this one here we normally take them to. This is known as the PayPal PayFlow. And I guess this is like the eWay equivalent under the PayPal banner. Now you can add tax codes, GST and all that lovely stuff. And I wanted to get on to shipping. So in terms of shipping, you can add um, your own custom shipping. That's what user defined means. So if you're using a courier company or a, someone to ship your goods around the country, uh, we would then work with you and, and do a bit of a quote to add all that in. It's quite labor intensive. We usually get into Excel spreadsheets and postcodes and weights and all sorts of things. Or well, you can just link in with Australia Post. Alrighty. So Australia Post synchronizes or, or I guess uh, integrates with Business Catalyst. As long as you've got the height, width, and depth, and weight of the product, you have the destination postcode. So just say you're living in Bendigo, you would put 3550, and you say you might use the express service. And from there, it actually calculates the postage. Really saves you a lot of work. And some people just use the Australia Post calculation service, but use their own courier. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. So how cool is that? All right, so that's the e-commerce product sort of shopping cart sort of approach. And you know, we use that all and all, uh, all the time. What you should know is under reports, you can also get e-commerce reports. So if I was selling online, I can come in here and see how many sales I've had. I can see what the top products are. And I can also see the geographical location. You can see you know, all sorts of things in here and you can export that as a uh, Excel spreadsheet or so, sorry, I think just as a PDF. Let's just go view all. And from here I can then, you know, if I had a, a graph, which I don't, um, down the bottom here I can export the report and I can export it as an Excel spreadsheet or, or a PDF. So very handy and it's got that inbuilt. So e-commerce, that's the back of Business Catalyst. It's now time to pop back into the, the presentation and just sort of start to wrap this up. Uh, there's a lot more we can teach, of course, but that certainly gives you a, a very good overview in terms of the product. So I'll just bring up the presentation to make sure I'm all on track. Okay, so Conversion optimization. This is all about when someone lands on your website, how do you improve the conversion rate, turning a lead into a sale? So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on that, give you some tips on increasing uh, what I would say a, a, a browser to a buyer. So we accept, we accept Visa card, MasterCard, PayPal. Really important to show that and say that you know these are the kind of credit cards we accept and, and so forth. And the other thing I always ask people to do and the designers and clients and the account managers, we've, we've really got to work together here and give the client, as in our client's client, the website visitor, calls to action. A call to action is you know get a quote, um, add to cart, um, buy today, um, uh, shop online. Whatever it is, just get them, get them started. Give them calls to action, call them to action. Offer some refund policies, you know, be upfront about that. You know, give people the option of, okay, what if I do if this doesn't work? You know, make that really sort of, you know, really um, upfront and, and just give people the confidence that, yep, you will cover the uh, costs or, you know, however you wanna work your business, I'm not here to, you know, to, to tell you that. What I'm saying is that people do look for refund policies, to, refund policies to build confidence. And they're also looking for delivery details. So when will it be delivered? How will it be delivered? You know, what happens if I'm not home? Can I leave a note? You know, whatever I'm asking here, give them the option of how you deliver the products. 
Consider adding a video on your site and, and encouraging people to watch a video either about how to use the product or, or the different sort of range that you have available. And you can just do that on YouTube and embed that in your website. So, you know, have someone walking in the shoe, have someone holding the, the, the wheelbarrow, um, have someone, you know, talking to the person about making a decision to come along to the course. Now, I encourage you to do some cross-selling. A, a torch needs a battery. And so I encourage you to think about that. You know, uh, what can you cross-sell, upsell, when someone's buying a wheelbarrow, they might wanna buy gumboots and so forth. And please, please, please don't forget about the mobile shopper. Okay, they're sitting there on their train on the way to work, they're on a tram, they're on a bus, they're in the passenger seat as husband's driving or if, you know, whatever, whatever's happening, this person is on their mobile. When we improved people's websites, a lot of our clients, we've had them for years, they've had shops for years, uh, they're not mobile friendly. So we've converted a lot of websites recently to be responsive, you know, and improving that mobile shopping experience is increasingly valuable. And not only for the mobile shopper, but now Google has just made the announcement that they're not going to be you know, ranking websites that aren't mobile friendly or responsive. Um, so you know, there's really no choice. We, we, you have to convert your website now to be responsive, not only to increase the mobile shopper to buy online, but also for Google rankings. We're kind of backed into a corner there, guys. All right, BC Training. If you love the webinar, you might want some more training. We do offer a lot of it. Um, you can log into our customer care center. That's where all these videos will be. And uh, we've also got a series of other videos in there for you to learn how to drive your BC website harder. We do run webinars, you're in them, and we do some one-on-one -on -one training. It's great to hear the trainers out there talking to people remotely. They record the conversation and send you a video file. But you can also access videos online. These are getting a little generic and a little old, but I thought I'd put the website link up there for you to know that they are available. So all I ask is that you give us a call, 1300 85 25 82, okay? And you can book in a training session. Now, if you need help and support, you can gotta submit a support ticket. We really ask you to do that. Um, you can either do that by emailing us or if you jump onto our website, top left hand corner, it says help desk, I believe. And so when you click on help desk, it takes you through the process. Look, you can call us, we're not gonna say no, but registering a support ticket means you're sort of joining the taxi rank in one respect and everyone's sort of in an orderly fashion and we'll work with you in that respect. So Tim's tip of the week. Well, next time you're purchasing online, take note. And what I mean by that is jump on these websites, start sort of going through the experience of buying gift vouchers or, or, or buying a ticket to an event or potentially purchasing a product, make a donation, take note. What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Don't forget about the mobile shopper. So do the same thing on your mobile. Get a feeling of how it works on your mobile. And then once you've done that, then I would highly recommend you upgrade your website to accept online payments. Start off with a PayPal buy button. Start off with a pay your bill online, add a wheelbarrow, sell tickets to events, accept donations, but I'm encouraging you to do it. You've got Business Catalyst, it's sitting there ready to go. Let's make the thing work harder for you. So I ask you to give us a call on 1300 85 25 82. Speak to your account manager and say, yep, I'm ready to accept online payments. Now, the last note, it's pretty please with a cherry on top. You've been so good to me going onto our Facebook page and leaving, I guess what I would call beautiful reviews, alrighty? It does help us to improve. I've used a lot of that feedback to bring this webinar to you today. So please jump onto the Facebook. I'll show you now, it's easy. You just go onto our Facebook page. And all you've got to do, everyone, is you just click on reviews, just here, reviews. And then from there, you just have to let us know how we're going. You know, I read these, I cherish these. These really help us to improve our service to you. 
So without you giving us reviews, it's really hard to get the feedback. It's a two minute job for you to do that for us. And I hope that you can do that and I really would appreciate it. Now you can always email studio with your review or you can give us a call. So ladies and gentlemen, the next topic and the last class of the masterclass series is advanced settings and the BC community. Wow, we really are digging in deep there. We're getting our advanced certificate in deep sea diving. We're looking at the <laughs> we're looking at some of those settings that we go, oh, what are they? What do they do? Um, I'd like to know more. So for those owls out there that like to know what their machine can do, this is going to be the BC masterclass for you. I'm also going to show you the BC community. Um, we're very active de design experts in the BC community. So I just wanted to let you know what's out there for you to access. So you can jump online and register that um, for your interest. It's uh, on designexperts.com.au business hyphen catalyst hyphen masterclass or you can access it via our menu system you can give us a call i hear jenny out the front sort of taking registrations all the time so that's pretty cool so you can call jenny and she can help you walk you so that was uh the end of the of the workshop i'm going to now push stop on the recording i thank you again for your attention and your time I didn't leave too much space there for you to jump in. Uh, there was a lot of content uh, and I somewhat apologize for that, but please understand this topic is quite intense to talk. There's a lot to get through and a lot of people now can go back and push play, pause, play, pause, and work through the information that they need. So thanks for your time. This is the captain out. Cheers. <laughs>